Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and I'm here with today's guest, very special guest. Uh, she's back by popular demand, the one and only Denise Messino. Hi. Hi. And you're joined Hi. by your husband, Greg Simpson. Hey, guys. Now, you guys got a, you know, usually we ha we get you here, Denise, we talk about bodybuilding, we talk about working out, we talk about exercise, but you guys have a very exciting project uh, that I want to talk about. Uh, it's called The Adventures of Misfit, and it's kind of like a docudrama, I call it, uh, about uh, your life as a superhero, or your other life as a superhero, and I'm going to let you tell us about it a little bit, but I, I, I watched it, you sent me a special advance link, and I loved it. I want to just tell you that right off the bat. Talk to us a little bit about what the movie's about and how it came about. Thank you. I, I think I'm going to let the director um, tell you a little bit about what the movie is about. Well, first of all, I mean, uh, it's interesting you call it a docudrama. It's a, it is a straight-up documentary, but if it plays with a little bit of drama and plays kind of like a movie, well, I mean, it is a movie, but I mean, it plays... We wanted it to be entertaining. We didn't want it to be a documentary in the sense of like, um, you know, it's time to eat your broccoli. You know, we wanted it to be fun. I, Greg, I judge a documentary or or, or any kind of uh, anything that that has a reality based tinge to it. Uh, as far as entertainment value, I judge it by how watchable it is and how intrigued and how motivated I am. Now, I, I started watching it. And I was doing some other work. I was doing like some computer work, and I just put it on. And I had to stop doing what I was doing because I was I was drawn into it. Number one, by how well it was edited and put together, and how well it flowed. It didn't drag at all. Um, but also by obviously Denise is a very compelling you know main you know character uh, in this whole thing. And it, and I like the way it was set up that she really didn't know what she was getting into. Uh, so Denise, tell us a little bit about what the movie's about and what people can expect when they see the movie. Well, when you say I didn't know what I was getting into, you're right. Um, we we saw this article um, about a, a guy who was calling himself a real life superhero and and who had created the secret identity for himself and was supposedly going out to the streets uh, and fighting crime and uh, and he was this this legend, so to speak. And that intrigued both of us. Now, as a bodybuilder, I think that I always wanted to look like a superhero. You know, I think that when you look at comic book superhero characters, you're looking at a bodybuilder's frame. And so uh, from as far as, as I can remember, you know, loving Wonder Woman growing up and then seeing the women bodybuilders of, you know, my earlier days, I thought they looked like living uh, superheroes. So I was intrigued about the idea of having people go out uh, who also wanted to not just look like but act like superheroes and um, and so meeting some of these people. So can I can I back that up yes, a bit? Yes, yes. So the whole concept, I mean, the idea is that not only was there a guy in Orlando called, by the name of Master Legend, um, and that was the article we read, but there were these guys all over the country in cities like Seattle, Portland. Um, New York City, Chicago, Salt Lake City, and um, they were um, basically dressing up in their own unique costumes as with their own homemade weaponry and armor and gear and going out in the streets and fighting crime. That was at least the first thing we saw about them. Then other after that, we realized that the real-life superhero concept was a a way you could really fight for any cause that you believed in, whether it was crime fighting or uh, stopping cruelty to animals or, you know, gay rights or protect the environment or anything, really. You know, it was just sort of a uh, way to draw attention to whatever your cause was. Yep. But, um, but yeah, at first we were drawn into the people that were like, crime fighters like holy shit really <laughs> now when i was when i was about 16 my friends and i used to play a uh, dungeons and dragons 
And uh, we decided at one point, you know, because we would do it in, we would go to each other's houses and, and you know, it was like a fantasy role playing thing. But we, we went, to, we decided to take it to the next level. We, we dressed up in the costumes of elves and dwarves and all the other, you know, accoutrements. And we put our swords on and we went out and we walked the streets. We only did it one time. And uh, we, we explored and we mapped things out. Like, you know, these guys are like grown adults and they're doing it like every day. And this is like, you know, this is what their passion is. And some of these people are a little, you know, let's face it, they're a little cuckoo bird. And I think that the great thing is that you could sense Denise's um, uh, observation that they're a little cuckoo bird. But then you got sucked in and you realized that they were, it was, they were doing something beyond just role playing. They were feeding the homeless. Uh, they were helping people. And it added another dimension to who these people actually were. No, no question about it. I mean, I, I'm a New Yorker, born and raised in Brooklyn. And so, you know, um, I was a little cynical of what they were doing, of whether or not it was real and um, what the motivation behind it was. Um, and, you know, I met several people who um, both confused me uh, about whether or not they were, what they were saying was true or not, what they, what they were really doing, what their motivation was, but who also charms me because um, the idea that people wanted to do something for somebody else is, is a charming thing. The fact that somebody would uh, live a lifestyle that is more than just about themselves, that sort of in, includes their community, uh, was charming to me. Um, never, never uh, would I have thought that I could fit in to that kind of a community because, you know, I'm not a cosplayer and um, not even really somebody that I consider myself a fantasy type person, but it was well, surprising. Not only that, but what about the um, activism part of it? Have you ever done any community service or anything like I, that? I, I hadn't. Um, I, I didn't connect the activism with the concept of superheroes. I mean, it just, it just wasn't. Superheroes are people with these superpowers. And so the idea of somebody calling themselves a superhero just seemed comical to me at the time. Um, but they were able to really make me think about it and look at it in a different way and, um, and redefine it really for myself. I mean, let, let's face it. I mean, you're, you're the most you know, authentic person in the whole group. So of course, if you start hanging out with these people, you're giving them credibility. They probably they saw you probably as their leader. You were the fearless leader. You if you if you would have kept going, you would have been running the whole. You could have united them in a united uh, superheroes thing. All the all the states you could have put together. You could have had a national convention. You could be holding a the Olympia of superhero contests if you really wanted to at some point. I mean, let's face it. Her own Justice League. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Greg. That was that was, that was perfect. Um, well, by the end of it, you know, she she does bring together a team of superheroes, and um, and that is her uh, that is her Justice League, and they've gone on to do something fairly heroic. Well, but, but at the same time, we call ourselves the Misfits for Life, and and. You know, that's who we are. We're sort of this group of misfits, people from different walks of life and, you know, different political views, different ideologies. But we have one thing in common, and it's that we're interested in doing something to help somebody else out. And it doesn't have to be all consuming. I think that's one of the things that I learned um, that I walked away from this whole group and this whole experience is that, you know, sometimes the amount of need that you see in the world on a daily basis feels so big, it feels crushing. And I always felt like, you know, uh, frustrated about what I c couldn't do. Um, because if I, if I gave a bottle of water to somebody who was homeless, there were five other people that I didn't have to give to. And that frustrated me. And that was actually part of my experience in this movie where I felt like, Oh my God, no matter how much I try to do, I feel like I'm not really making an impact. Well, so in the movie, there's an example. There's a, there's a homeless mission to hand out of supplies and uh, backpacks full of supplies and food and personal care items and um, sleeping bags. And as a team, they gave out 200 of these, these packs and sleeping bags to people on the streets in San Diego. And, and it feels like, okay, that's, that's good for one day. 
what's going to happen the other 364 days out of the year. But what was the other thing that you found about that in um, doing that? I mean, what did you find in terms of, like human connections and things like that? Well, I mean, it was it was um, it was really it was really eye opening. Um, I think that when you connect with other people, um, you find out that essentially we're all the same. You know, we all basically have the same needs, and 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 sometimes helping somebody is just doing something as simple as saying hello. You know, right. it, it it matters. It just matters. It's just a little bit of a human connection, and um, those are the kinds of moments that surprised me, that still surprise me uh, today, because um, because the, like I said, the amount of need out there is is always present. Um, but what I learned from this is that you don't have to take on the world. You don't have to commit yourself 365 days out of the year. Um, you could do a little something, just a little something, and make a big difference. What? Um, and I think that's my biggest takeaway from this whole thing. Denise, who was the, uh, the, the most unusual superhero that you encountered in your, uh, your taping? Uh, and wh what was his special power? <laughs> oh my God! Um, well, I, as you know, I met a lot of different superheroes. We met, we met over a hundred. Now they're not all featured in the movie, and some of them are, some of them are background players in the movie, and some of them didn't uh, make the cut at all, just because of, of time. But we literally met over a hundred people all over the country and uh, all over the U.S. and Canada. Who was, uh, the, the, who was the craziest? Yep. What's that? Who was the craziest? Crazy. Well, we chose not to meet some of the craziest ones. <laughs> Why not? Dangerous? Yeah, uh, potentially. You know, I mean, crazy enough to uh, that we didn't want to, like, enter their orbit. <laughs> well, you know, some of these guys are going out to really dangerous uh, streets, and they're going out and they're patrolling, um, and they're kind of like community uh, watch you know, but they're putting themselves at risk. You know, there's a, there's a guy in New York who, you know, kind of patrols areas in New York City around um, parks where, you know, drug deals are going down, and he intervenes. He tells people, I know what you're doing. Get out of here. Um, and <laughs> Well, that's the, that's the dark guardian in New York. We didn't get a chance to meet him, but there's a, a video online of him uh, going face-to-face -face with a drug dealer that looks about twice his size, and he says, is, yeah, I got a camera here, and, uh, you know, get out of my park. And he chases the guy off. Wow. But um, And then, you know, and then there's Danger Man, who you meet in the movie, who's got me climbing and scaling, you know, the side of buildings, which, you know, there were moments when we were filming this movie that I thought, you know, I'm on the side of this building thinking, what am I thinking, you know? Um I got to train tomorrow, you know, and if I bust a leg, I'm going to be pissed. So, you know, there were a lot of moments in the movie that throughout the process of meeting these people that I was charmed and I was confused and I was charmed and I was like, but this is crazy. Um, who, had the, it, who had the best costume, Denise? Which, which, which like, guy did you say, wow, this guy really, this guy looks like a superhero. This guy actually did it right. Say maybe um, DC's Guardian would be a one, right? DC's Guardian has a, a really cool, he's the red, white, and blue. Okay. Uh, you see him at the Hope Mission. Mm. Um, I thought Master Legend was really cool, too. You know, he had these arm guards, and they all have these handmade, modified, um, you know, hockey equipment. And um, it was like hockey. It's a combination of like hockey, BMX, spandex, uh, the Halloween store. Right. Um, you know, and then spray painted uh, to to look like what your character looks like. Yeah, you know, you I know, all have different looks, right? But you know, I looked at Denise's costume, the misfit costume, and you actually looked like a superhero. Not just because you have a good body, but you had a real superhero costume. These people look like they went into their parents, like you know, you know, when you're a kid, you have the the toy chest with all the uh, the equipment, like the hockey stuff, like you said, all the sports. And they just like said, let's see what we can put on here. And so a lot of them look a little cuckoo. You know, you had a really good, you look like, you know, you could have fit in on the, you know, one of the TV shows, you know. Uh, I don't know why you think these people go out, you know, as, as superheroes, they should actually look the part, you know. <laughs> well, well, you know, the, here's, here's the other thing about it, though. I mean, these activists are 
these are not people who are well to do. They're they're good Samaritans who are hardworking people, and a lot of them, you like I point out, you know, if they have a couple extra dollars, instead of putting it towards something for them, they give it to somebody else. Right. And so, right. um, uh, you know, they make do, and that's part of what charmed me. Though it made me laugh, it made me think, this is crazy, this is kooky, and at the same time, it charmed me. Well, and the other thing is, I mean, some of these. Some of the guys are, are coming up with modified armor for scuffles they might get in, you. anything you know, <laughs> yeah. in chest armor to arm plates to whatever. Uh, I think that's part of the appeal but, for them, too, because it's sort of this creative, expressive thing that they're doing. What, you know, what, That's part of the appeal. Well, but what I was going to say about that was you don't have any of that because your mission is not crime fighting. Right. So there's no, there's no crime fighting gear as part of your costume. Right. What do the cops think about this, Greg? Did, they, did you guys talk to any police officers? I mean, did these guys get in trouble? Did they ever get arrested because they they shouldn't be being vigilantes out there? You know. Well, we touch on one of the stories um, the, in the um, in the movie. There's two people we didn't actually talk to, but uh, but we know their stories. One of them was um, a guy named Beesting who shot a uh, shotgun off in a trailer park when he got in a scuffle with somebody over their motorcycle being too loud. And he was arrested. And then um, Phoenix Jones out of Seattle, uh, a lot of people have heard of him, but he um, he pepper sprayed a bunch of uh, Russians that were had in this drunken brawl outside of a, uh, outside of a bar. And he got arrested for that. I don't know that he did anything wrong, but he did get arrested. And they actually unmasked him. Oh He's actually uh, an interesting character. He's an MMA fighter. Oh. But um, some of these guys are, are credible in different ways, you know. And, and that's the interesting thing is as soon as you are about to write them off, you learn something or see something that is like, oh, well, there's that side of it too. Right. All right, the movie is called The Adventures of Misfit, and the uh, it's going to be premiering at the Sunscreen Film Festival uh, this Sunday in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, on May 1st, which I understand, Denise, is also your birthday. Is that correct? It is. Happy birthday. Thank you. So that's a, that's hey. a nice birthday present. Hey. Show me your logo. I hope it's a good omen. Now you know what it stands for when you see the MF. <laughs> I, well, I, I knew. I, I think it's great. You know, I think it's, it, it actually looks like a, it actually looks better than some of the real superheroes uh, logos. I got news for you. Um, yeah, do you, do you ever uh, go out now in public as Misfit? I mean, do you ever do this like in your daily life, or do you kind of just keep that, you know, for special occasions? Well, well I do it for my mission, of course. Um, which hard to believe that. Um, that came about, but and then I do events with the the superhero community. You talked about me pulling these people together, but the truth is, is that there are organized groups of real life superheroes. The initiative, uh, which is head, headed up by one of the people that we um, cover here, Rock and Roll, is a group that keeps growing. They have um, initiatives popping up in different states. And so they're unified and they're organized and they're doing, you know, nationwide and even international stuff. So, um, so I do stuff with them whenever I can. We'll get together for a very specific mission. I, I do an annual Hope mission. So you, you don't really wear the uh, misfit costume. Oh, day to day. Too much. Huh? Day to day. No. Not day to day. Around the house, she does. She, she, <laughs> she, she, she pretends she's flying. I have actually. a cape. I have a cape. She has yeah. a cape and she runs around like I'm flying. I'm a superhero. I got to get myself a cape. It'll make my lats look bigger. Um, there you go. If people, if people want to go to this uh, this screening of this movie on May 1st in St. Petersburg, how uh, how can they get tickets? Uh, is there any place uh, where they can get information about it? Um, tell us. Yes. Well, it's uh, sunscreenfilmfestival.com. Sunscreen like sunscreen you'd apply to yourself. Okay. And um, you just go to the schedule and scroll down to The Adventures of Misfit and buy a ticket. Um, you could probably buy tickets right there at the box office, assuming that they're not sold out. And um, I'll just tell people not to use Firefox. Use anything else, Chrome, okay. um, Safari, Internet Explorer. Firefox seems to hang up when it gets to the schedule. Gotcha. Now, we know Denise has a ton of fans, so it might. how many seats are available for this uh, screening? 
I think it's about 175 seats in the theater. All right. So hopefully uh, if you guys want to get tickets, you better act now because, once again, Denise is very popular, and I'm sure all her fans are going to want to go see her and see this movie. And what is it? What is it under $10? What is it? How much does it cost to get in? It's just under ten dollars for a ticket, oh, okay. and um, we're going to be doing some giveaways, and there's going to be also a small panel uh, after. We're going to have some of the other superheroes there with us, so that should be oh, fun. Oh, really? Too. Oh, that's that's fun. Just, now, yeah, uh, some of the yeah, some of the stars of the movie. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, superhero and lady hero out of uh, Clearwater, Florida, and we're hoping Master Legend from Orlando will show up, he and uh, Artist Roy also from Clearwater. Hey. So yeah, we could have. Uh, a handful of superheroes all in costumes, so good picture-taking opportunities. And misfit. Well, yeah, of it, course. Yeah. And, you know, if there is some crime in the city, you, you, the, the superheroes might have to, you know, skip out on the on the event. So hopefully everything will be calm on that day. Now, Denise, I've been getting a lot of people asking me, because they know that I know you and that I'm friends with you. They have been asking me, because you've been putting out a lot of videos and you're looking very lean. Are you going to compete again? <laughs> the magic... <laughs> I have no plans for a competition. Why not? I don't believe you. You don't believe me. Yeah. Yeah, I have no. I have no official plans no for official. a competition. What about the unofficial plans? I, I have no unofficial plans either. What? How, what <laughs> when was the last time you competed? Uh, the last time I competed was two thousand seven at wow. the Miss International. Wow! You guys, almost ten time. years ago. Almost ten years. Nine years. Yeah. So, you know, b between this project and, um, you know, life and business, it's it's been a lot. This this project's been a five year project. Um, Greg, you can make a documentary on Denise's return to the stage after 10 years in the new classic physique division in the new, excuse me, women's physique division. That's your next, you. next docudrama. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks. I, Thanks, Dave. I understand. I understand. It was. It took five. It, did it? Did it take five years to make this this documentary? Uh, yeah, ish. You know, we had um, other things going on, so it was uh, not a full time thing for five years. But yes, a lot of uh, a lot of time. We went to a number of cities and um, did a lot of shooting and a lot of interviews and a lot of uh, probably I think probably a million hours of editing. I, I, your, your estimate is probably within one or two hours of the mark. <laughs> now, Greg, I have a question to you as, a, as an editor. Uh, I, I think you're fantastically talented. Obviously, this is what you do for a living. But um, how do you – and this is, I'm sure Johnny Styles is listening on this one too. When you have that much footage and you kind of have in your head an idea of how you want to put it together, how do you sit down for the very first session and start doing it? How do you get yourself to say, all right, here we go. Let's go. Let's, let's get editing now, you know? Well, um, you know, I mean, there's a there's a chronology to it and sort of a natural progression to it. You kind of lay it out. But uh, when you first get started, the easiest thing to do is like just take one scene and, and work with it. And whether it's um, the beginning, middle, or end of the movie, I mean, just jumping in wherever you feel inspired to. It's like, because it is so monumental a task, it, it's not, uh, you have to start with the things that you can wrap your head around and some of the more challenging things um you know some of the early scenes came together quickly and some of the later scenes took pass after pass after pass after pass to get right so um you know just to just to make sure that it it holds together as a story you know did you have to shoot a lot of stuff afterwards like connecting stuff and voiceovers and i mean after yeah Little, little pieces. We didn't we didn't do voiceover per se. Not strictly speaking, we did interviews, right. and uh, Denise spoke in her own words, and so that was um, yeah, that was the strategy. Was never to have any voiceover, uh, not like a, a red script. Gotcha. Well, it was a phen I, phenomenally entertaining. Um, once this screens, where will people be able to watch it? Is it going to be a download thing? Is it going to be an iTunes thing? How will people watch it? All of that eventually. Okay. We're going to have our run in film festivals first, and we'll see. So far, this is the only one that's scheduled, so it's just the beginning of the journey. Uh, honestly, I just looked at the Blu-ray that's going to screen uh, this morning. We watched it. So the movie just got finished, um, well, technically this morning. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations on that, and good luck this Sunday. And, Denise, have a great birthday. 
Thank you. So let me ask you something, yes. uh, Dave. You there? Yes, of course. So uh, if you were going to be a superhero, what would you be? Um, I would have to be. I would have a big J on my on my chest, and it would be. I would be Jumbo Palumbo, right? Or JP, right? Jumbo Palumbo. Jumbo Palumbo. That's pretty good. <laughs> and, and what's your power? My power is uh, mind control. <laughs> I'd like to levitate a little bit too. That would be helpful, also. I don't know how I could. I don't know how I could prove that, but you know, maybe I could. Uh, you know, Johnny and I will film a little a little scene. Uh, we'll 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 send it over to you of me controlling the uh, the people in my office. You know, mind control oh, people in my office. So is Johnny gonna be a super villain? Johnny, Johnny, what what would you be, Johnny? Yeah, what would uh, Steve Blackman would be the super villain? Would Johnny, what would you be? You were, he had a here he had a, a Johnny was in the WWE for a while and he had a a, a character. What was your character there? Well, I was I was a heel, I was a villain. Too. Oh, you were a villain. So what was your character? Like, of course. I like the, I like the mind reading, like the mind control. Johnny control. likes my mind control power, so. Yeah. What would Amanda be? What would her power be? No, I. <laughs> we'll have to ask her. I don't want to put her on the spot because she doesn't like to get on camera. Yeah. Power <laughs> persuasion. That's right. Well, that's kind of mind control. That's I think that's my power. <laughs> that's, mm, that's true. Maybe control. I'm just her, maybe I'm just like a puppet and she's pulling the strings. She's really the mind control person. <laughs> <laughs> the puppet master. She's the puppet master. <laughs> puppet master. So it's yeah. something to think about. I that's something puppet. to think about, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, if I had to like dress up and go in public, I don't know what I would wear. That. I, that would be a little. I, I back in the day, I probably would have worn very little, like you did, because I was big and freaky looking. Now I'm a little on the smaller side. I'm still lean. I'd probably go more for a a, 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 a more total costume, to, total cover costume. Now I'll, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Maybe I'll come okay. to one of your uh, superhero conventions, you know, down the road when I uh, okay. when, when we eventually good. move down to Florida. You know. <laughs> That sounds good. That sounds good. All right. Well, guys. Thank you for having us on. Thank you so much. And uh, great job with the movie. Uh, very enjoyable. And I encourage everyone out there who's watching to check it out. I'm sure it'll be on iTunes. It's called The Adventures of Miss Fit, starring the one and only oh. Denise Messino. Thanks, Greg. Right. Thanks, Denise. And you guys have the, uh, the URL for the website, right? Adventuresofmissfit.com. Yes, we do. We, so. We've had it up on the screen. Okay, right. cool. Thank you. All right, guys. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Give us Johnny. a front double bicep. There we go, Denise. All right. Johnny's happy now. <laughs> Let me make some room. <laughs> that, uh, that'll do it, guys. And that'll take us Bye. to the uh, end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time. <laughs>